driving it to center, the Leafs and the Carolina Hurricanes. And responsible for the rink residences tonight, Cam Ward for the Carolina Hurricanes, 14-8-2 against the Leafs' lifetime, 2.74. Jonathan Bernier will make just his fourth appearance against the Hurricanes. He has a 2.71 goals against average in those starts. And welcoming back to the fold, Tyler Bozak who will be uh, centering the number one line as we start here with Kuhlman along with McCormick and Clarkson out there for Toronto and against the number one unit for the Carolina Hurricanes. Back to the point, it comes a long shot is blocked in front of the goal. Kuhlman is able to get it ahead and now Clarkson rolls it down into the Hurricane zone. Now back of the net, Justin Falk getting it up on the right wing side and it's going to sail all the way down for an icing to be brought back into the Toronto zone. Well, it's been a difficult season for Tyler Bozak in terms of staying healthy. When he's been healthy, he's been very effective for his hockey club, but he's been battling injuries, missed 12 games early in the season, and then, of course, missed 12 recently also with a little bit in between. Draw one by the Hurricanes, stepping back. Sakara gets it out into the center ice area. And now pushed along the boards as Kessel unable to get it in. Falk looks for Sekera, down back it goes. Here's Andre Sekera getting it to center and off the line. Bennett is pushed back by the Leafs and now carried out by Bozak. To center ice, he launches a long backhand off the glass and the Hurricanes will go back to recover it. Sekera gets it up on the left wing, off a stick. Cody Franson has it now for Toronto. As he tried to play it on the backhand, it jumps the boards and ends up in the lead bench. Well, the focus you know from the coach Randy Carlisle was we got to be better than we were a couple of nights ago in our first period against the Buffalo Sabres and ready to play. And often coming off what I call the turkey bowl, where you're never 100% after a couple of days off. Perhaps that affected the Leafs a little more being at home, but tonight they should be fine and are raring to go on this one. Usually you traveled or played on Boxing Day. So that only meant that you got one turkey bowl. But when you get leftovers too, ooh, I'm not sure. And at home. And at home, exactly. You don't have that travel day also on the 27th. And around back of the net. Into the corner it goes, and a long pass goes astray. And it is going to be waved off as far as the icing is concerned. Cadre along the boards trying to free it up, but it is dug out by Riley Nash, and the Hurricane get it to center ice and play it in over the line. A little too far for Patrick Dwyer, back out into the center ice area, and now Malhotra plays it back to his own blue line. Mike Commissarek got it into the zone, long shot, and it steered off the blocking glove of Bernier up into the screen and out of play. Well, Mike Commissarek has not played much. He too has battled a few injuries and been in and out of the lineup. And the, Curl Her the Hurricanes acquired him to be a 5-6 defenseman, a depth guy that would provide some leadership for them and give them a little more size in the blue line also, and it hasn't worked out too well for them as of yet. Draw to the left to Bernier. Which is wide of the net, far side for Zach Boychuk, who got it in front of the net, is able to get it back to the blue line. Thomas Eric, far side, and Tim Gleason's shot was deflected long. Gardner tried to chip it by, but it's picked off, and it comes back to Gleason again. Now to Commissarek. Commissarek's pass, knocked out of the air by the leg of Gardner, but it's back in behind the net again. Boychuk trying to center. Had it knocked away, Dvorak couldn't help out. The Leafs will play it off the glass to center ice. Gleason forced back, both teams changing in the go. Pass up the middle, intended there for Eric Stahl, didn't work. And it's now back in the Toronto zone. Near side for Jerry D'Amico. D'Amico comes to center. Leafs send it in. Clarkson out there with Thomas Sarek, or excuse me, with uh, McClement. And now the change comes as Kuhleman jumps over the boards to join his mates. Gunnarsson backhanding it ahead. Clarkson at his own line. Played it to the blue line in the Carolina zone. They managed to push it over. And Sekera is back there to recover it. Ball, long left wing feed, gobbled up by Alexander Semen, and a long shoot in is taken on the chest by goaltender Bernier. The first period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Pure Lighter. Excitement delivered.
by Five Hour Energy. And by Ford, go further. So the face off to the right of Bernier. And a little movement there by Nathan Kirby. And it is around back of the net, played up on the near side and chopped by Van Riemsdyk down into Carolina territory. No icing, says the linesmen, who are Matt McPherson and Steve Miller. Paul Dvorsky and Ian Walsh have the stripes on their arms tonight. Down into the corner it goes, played by Kirby back along for Jordan Stahl. Stahl is tied up, and the Leafs are able to break it out. Gardner carries to center, rolls it in and goes after it. Puts the brakes on in the corner, drives to center, and Reemsdijk tipped it wide of the goal. Bozak in along the wall, battles in there with Brett Belmore. Van Reemsdijk around back of the net to an empty corner. And the Hurricanes will get there first and send a long lead pass for Gerby. They went off his stick. Ranger, rink wide, far side, intercepted by Bowman. Played ahead at center, Stahl just rolling it down into Toronto territory. Both teams are changing as the pass comes up on the wing. Grabbed off by Morgan Riley then and fed out into the center ice area. It's a perfect road start for the Carolina Hurricanes. This is what they want, to slow the Leafs down and check all over the ice and not give them any time and space. And so far they've been effective doing it. Nash's shot was blocked, delayed offside at the blue line. Ranger chopped that away from the winger and now <laughs> trying to escape with his helmet over his face was Dwyer. And now brought back the other way. Sekera launches it down into the zone. Hope we get an opportunity to see that. Looked like he had a football helmet on there with the face mask. Out is Franson ahead. Here's Kadri across the line. Dropping, Franson has it, but he couldn't get a shot away. And a nice play there to pick it up off his skate to play it down into the zone is Manny Malhotra. Around on the far side, it goes for Franson. Franson ahead of the center ice line, broken up. Thomas Sarek turns back. It is deflected down by Malhotra into the zone, but it is jumped up and out of play, and a faceoff is coming outside the blue line. Well, here's Ranger here, and Dwyer gets his helmet pushed right up on top of his head. No call on the play. Look at Dwyer. It's pretty hard to skate with your helmet over your eyes. And he got right off to the player's bench afterwards. You know, That's a sizable mouth guard, eh, guys? It is. You got to get a trainer to drill holes in the top of the helmet just in case that happens again. And across the line for Stahl, turning in his own zone. Belmore gets his pass. And it's brought to center with a pass in over the line to Rutu offside. So it'll be brought back into the center ice area. Well, Eric Stahl heating up a little bit of late playing with Skinner, who's really hot, and Rutu on the other side. And they've been about a goal a game, their line, for the last, oh, 17 games or so. Since, or pardon me, the last 17 games since actually Skinner returned from his concussion. And as you look at Eric Stahl here, his numbers are just okay this year. Glenn Wesley at 729 games played in a Carolina uniform, so Stahl will equal that mark. And a nice hit charge is coming here as it's down the ice and will be brought back. And his line mate Skinner, by the way, 10 goals in his last 11 games, so the youngsters really heated up. And Kurt Muller, you can see, he wants a line change as the Carolina Hurricanes Trying to go line for line a little bit on the road here against the Maple Leafs. Face off to the left in the Carolina zone. Bozak lost the draw. Belmore steps back of the goal. They reverse the puck and slow things down as it is played up on the wing. Too far for Gerby, and the Leafs have it at their own blue line. And the checking line comes out for Carolina against the Bozak. Down back of the net for Ron Hainsey to get it out. And stolen away there from relief defenseman uh, Franson. And uh, fortunate there as it comes to the side of the goal. Oh, my. Stahl could have pulled that right out on his forehand and got a good scoring chance. Instead, played it back of the goal line. And Cody Franson really took that nonchalant, thinking he was going to be able to handle that easily and turned out turning it over. And all of this has been as a result of that play. And now... Wisely, Jonathan Bernier decides I better hang on to this and bring a face off in the Toronto zone 
when we return. No score, first period, six minutes play. Kim Horton's official copy of the NHL. Well, Carolina does a pretty good job in their takeaways. They're up on top of the league in that area, and their big guys have just been okay so far this year. They have to be much better if they expect to get in the playoffs. Just a point behind in third place in their division, mind you, for a playoff spot for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The giveaway is always an issue when you got a team that likes to try and do it against you and keep the defense where they are is the Carolina Hurricanes are pretty good from the back end joining the attack. Played right down into the Carolina zone. Gleason got it to the blue line. Kadri was able to knock it high, but it is volleyballed over the glass by Gleason. Looks like Kirk Muller's trying to get Jordan Stahl out against the Bozak line. At least that's what he tried to do moments ago in that little matchup that he had going. And now Randy Carlisle playing the game, counters and puts Bozak on the ice against Manny Maholtra. Maholtra has been a wizard in the face-off area all his career. And certainly while he was in Vancouver, he was excellent. He's better than 60% during his career. And he won that face-off again as it's played back into the center ice area. It's one area that should help the big line with Bozak back as well as Kadri just 41% on the draws on the season. Bozak, a much better face-off man. Bernier with a nice play around the boards to spring this attack. Kessel in, Kessel with a shot, rebound! And that one off a skate, and it comes to the side of the goal, and Ward has got it in his glove as we get some shoving in the area at the side of the net. And there'll be a face-off coming in the zone to the left. Nice play by Bernier to start this attack. Yeah, and we've watched him do it all season long, where he just throws it around to his defense, makes quiet plays, and this sends him off. And in the left of your screen there, you saw a collision where Cadden took his man down, got away with it. That got him available. Kessel couldn't find him. And we haven't talked much about Cam Ward yet, but he is a leaf killer in this building. And the Leafs have not tested him so far here in this first period. Draw to the left. Ward here at the Air Canada Centre is 9-3 and 2, Milsey. Yep. In 14 career games, 2.39, the goals against average. Leafs have had better luck playing against Ward while down in Carolina. Now here's Gunnarsson. Played it ahead for Clarkson. He's able to push it ahead. Now Kuhlman gets it down into the Carolina zone and goes in there against Jeff Skinner. Markham Native reverses the puck. McClement into the four check. Now Kuhlman pushes it back along the wall. That hit the referee and allows the Hurricanes to get it out. Stall for Sekera who plays it in and Phaneuf stepped into him. Now a loose puck in front of the goal. Down to Bernier. Puck is still free. Another shot. Oh, and he got over. What a second effort by Bernier to get that left pad across and deny Skinner with the backhand. Uh, Dion Phaneuf stands in without any support. And when he does that, he gets caught big time. Here he stands in right here, checks up, and both players go for the puck. And that creates the two-on-one there. Well, that may have not have had the wrong read. It's just that his player with him did not fill in behind him. And Bernier, we've watched him. He's so flexible as he works on his stretching every day. And there's a good example of it there as he gets his pad down to make the rebound save. Branson played it to the line, but it doesn't clear. Right back into the corner for Jordan Stahl. Now back to the goal, trying to center. He did. It's still free. No. Hot <laughs> potato. Yeah. Here's a pass back to the blue line, and it'll come all the way out of center ice. Just couldn't quite find the handle. Both sides. <laughs> all sides. <laughs> Wow. Look like you're Green Bay Packers at times so far. Oh, tonight. no, no. Bowman comes to center. Launches it into the left wing corner. Bernier out of the goal to play it around on the wall, and the Leafs will break out on the left wing side, and Raymond will shoot it down. Bounces. Look out. We're seeing all kinds of crazy hops here so far. Lupul in the corner. Bounces it back, and now Raymond will slide it back in. Lupul looking for Kadri. Kadri comes back, left it in the corner for Lupo. Lupo's got a man back to the net. It was Raymond, but he didn't get him the puck. And it'll be brought out now by Patrick Dwyer. 
Dwyer in on the left wing, pulls the brakes. Got <laughs> pasted there by Cadre. Sakura gets it to the line and in, and Ranger finds Riley. They return the disc, and it is banked out at center and chipped in by Lupo, who will peel to the bench, and in goes D'Amico along with Holland. They get into the corner after it, can't make a play, and out at center ice it comes now, a drop pass. Dvorak rolls it in a goal! They're still looking for it, and finally the oven mitts are able to pounce on it with Bernier finding a way to get underneath his glove this time. Well, here you go, Joe, and sometimes as a goalie, you're looking for it, you just can't find it. There it is. And October the 17th, the only other time these two teams met, it was Ron Hayes, he kind of was helped along by Bernier, and that was the winner. You hate to bring that one back on poor Bernier, but that was a the most interesting goal, I think, of the year, perhaps the lead. Interesting's a word. What's that? <laughs> Tying, yeah, I'm not, not sure everybody would use it, but <laughs> yeah, interesting. I'm pretty sure Bernier doesn't use it as interesting. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Different. It might be an adjective there, too. Yeah, as well. I think so, yes. <laughs> Deleted. <laughs> Off the board, blocked by Clarkson, but he couldn't get the puck in deep. And Eric Stahl turns with it now. Stall dropping it back into his own zone. Brett Belmore to the far side. And it's played out at center ice and down into the zone it goes. Here's Rutu taken down by two leads. The puck goes free. Centering pass is blocked. And the Maple Leafs have given up the first seven shots of the game. Do not have one yet on Cam Ward. Nothing. Zero. Zippo, Zilch, Nada, Butkus. Down into the zone it goes. A centering pass goes off the skate of seven. And it is dug out then by Gardner, but played off the wall, not out. Kept alive by Justin Falk, but now it does come to center. Brought back in offside, at least in a delayed offside. And now the Leafs have it again. Played ahead at center ice. That is broken up, and the Leafs now a stick slash. Derby's going to get a penalty here for breaking. Cody Franson stick. So the Leafs are going to go to the power play without a shot on goal. Nothing. Now, Gerby in the penalty box for the slash, but Bob McGill, you got to like the way the defensive stood up so far in this game, particularly Franson. Yeah, no question about it. I think the big key when you have some big centermen with some speed for Carolina, you got to stay up and hold up the blue line with some definite work. And the reason why Carolina leads the league in takeaways is that aggressive approach by Gerbe. And Franza picks up the stick. He could have given it to Gerbe and he would have <laughs> cut it off. It still would have been long enough for him. Yeah, the shorter half was still tall. Here are the Leafs on the power play then. Franson back to Fanuf. Fanuf holds, looks at Franson, dishes it off down to Lupo. Lupo gives off to Kessel. Kessel to Lupo, trying to come in front. He did! And he launched it high over top of the goal. Franson has to bail out as a bank pass ahead. Too far just for Dvorak, and it's knocked into the zone. Seven oh, shorthanded goals for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes leads the league. Sorry, Joe. That's quite all right. We'll get to it in a moment. All power plays in tonight's lead TV broadcast from Toronto brought to you by Just Energy. Energy made easy. And all the shorties on the road as well. Kessel up on the left wing side. Van Riemsdyk couldn't carry in. Being forced wide by Patrick Dwyer. And now Phaneuf off the wing to Kessel. He doesn't bring it into the zone. That goes off a leg and brought on by Lupel. Lupel into the corner. Drops it back for Kessel on it. Goes to Phaneuf back to Kessel. Kessel in tight along the wall. Looking for an outlet. Tried to play it back into the corner for Lupo. Lupo was able to restore order. Fanuf over now for the France and back to Fanuf. Fanuf doesn't shoot it. Lupo has it. He's got Van Riemsdyk in front of the goal. And France deflected that wide. Into the corner for Van Riemsdyk. Kicked around back of the goal. Kessel couldn't get to it the first time. Does the second. Wrapped around the tip by Van Riemsdyk went just wide. And there's a shot by France that goes wide as well. Kessel. Back to the point to Fanuf. Fanuf works to the point. The shot is fired wide of the goal. Kessel's going to grab the rebound on the near boards. Sends it along now to Van Riemsdyk. Pass in front for 
Hanson couldn't get the shot away. Right around back to the net, Van Riemsdyk with it again. Kessel to the blue line. Phaneuf. Hanson. Phaneuf again. Now to Kessel. Stepping in. No. To Lupo. Shot stopped by Ward. Rebound is still free. Played into the corner. And Kessel was gassed. Couldn't go to get it. But now they better get to the bench because the odd man rush is going the other way. Penalty is expired. Lupo is still on the ice. And now will be exchanged as Carl Gunnarsson plays the puck off the boards to Kadri. A lead pass finds Mason Raymond. He's got two shots during that power play. Although they had good puck recovery and some good opportunities to get shots towards the net, only two managed to get to Cam Ward. And a long extended power play here for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Leafs now do get their change and Lupel tries to get it deep. And that's where you get in trouble, but a full change for the Toronto Maple Leafs and that way Carolina, who they're very aware are good shorthanded, did a real good job of making sure they're on the ice against that penalty kill. So the faceoff is to the right of Cam Ward. Holland. If you hear the excitement in, in voice. Bowen's <laughs> voice, this Packers just won, and I'll never hear the end of it. No, no, no. As an owner, <laughs> I'll keep it quiet. <laughs> Played down into the Toronto zone. I'm happy for you, Joe. Yeah. I know what a fan you are. It's been a big, uh, big weekend with the Irish winning yesterday. Long shot wide of the goal. Far corner it goes to Alexander Semin. Played along the boards. Gunnarsson got it freed up. And now waiting for things to clear and finding some skating room is Domingo. Up ahead for Holland. Launched into the zone and Domingo was first into the corner after it. Back for Holland. Holland left it there for Jerry Domingo. Domingo looking for a man. Coming in front of the net. And it was Morgan Riley. And he was off balance. Didn't get much on the puck. But what a great idea. Riley in the corner. Holland helps him out. Back to the net for Orr. Down the boards it goes, and Ranger plays it back to the net. Domingo with a chance to hit there, and the puck comes free, and now Orr brings it back in. Domingo and out there as Orr heads to the bench, so does Domingo. Launch down into the Toronto zone. The trickle-down effect of having Tyler Bozak back in the lineup means your fourth line with Holland, Domingo, and Orr is a lot more functional. Well, I thought maybe Holland would stay on the third line. I'm a little bit surprised in some ways. Although, what do you do? Put Kadri all the way from the first to the fourth? All right, it's the Jay deal. McClement. Yeah, there's a shot from a sharp angle. Went through the net, now comes in front again. And he's cleared ahead. But he's your checker. You're exactly. checking him. Yep. Brought back the other way. Offside as Gleason brought it in, and it's whistled in. From the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, you're watching Molson Canadian Leaf Hockey on Leafs TV. Randy Carlisle made a very interesting statement about Morgan Riley all oh, this past week, just before the Christmas break, when he said, you know how well Gardner skates? I think Riley even skates even a little better. And if you watch these clips, that wide, powerful stance that he has, he can really fly in. This kid, as he gains more and more confidence, He's just starting to open up a little bit more offensively as well. And here's his first NHL goal here. He snaps it up over top of Mark Andre Fleury. But he's an exciting player to watch. And he's got a huge future. Oh, an enormous upside. Domingo carries around back of the goal with that speed. Now allowed to come out in front. Back to the point. The Ranger bounces in front of the backhand by Orr at the side of the goal. Four misses Malhotra with a hit. And it's out into the center ice area and fed back into Carolina territory. Circling the goal, Ron Hainsey. A long lead pass is too far. Rangers in position to have icing called. And it'll be brought back. Tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. 
One thing about having a fourth line, you get opportunities like Jerry Domingo does in his first couple of shifts out here in the period. You play in the other team's end, you're going to get more ice time, and that's the trickle-down effect, having a guy like Peter Holland on the fourth line. Laid out and down into the Toronto zone. Icing is waved off, and Gunnarsson turns with a pass for Kuhlman. Kuhlman deludes one, slips it down into Carolina territory. Leafs have had the last four shots on goal after surrendering the first eight. Back of the goal, too far for Kuhlman, but he's after it again. He puts the brakes on, now tries to get it away from Mike Komisarek. Komisarek knocks his man into the corner as it comes back to the blue line. Long wrist shot by Gardner, and it's an easy catch for Cam Ward, who will hold for a faceoff in the Carolina zone. Well, the Carolina Hurricanes have had a horrible time the last couple of seasons keeping goalies healthy, and once again this year, Cam Ward hurt. Justin Peters finally had a chance, and it looks like he's going to be an okay backup goalie other than the last couple of games that he's played. And Cam Ward needs to get his game going a little bit more if this team is going to get in the playoffs, although Peters has done an excellent job helping out the cost. Ozark lecture two on the art form of face-off etiquette. Center to score! A backhand from behind the goal line by Kessel. And it's one nothing Toronto. Bozak will get an assist, I believe. And this is a huge play here. A scramble draw. And that's just a bad goal on Cam Ward. I mean, a scramble draw. Give Phil Kessel credit to find the puck shooter and then just pick it up with his quick hands and throw it towards the net. And I'm not so sure what Cam Ward's doing is right here, he beats Falk to the puck. But Falk says, I'm not worried about Phil Kessel. He's on the goal line. And that's just a horrific goal by Cam Ward who doesn't normally let those in. Here's a chance for Kessel trying to find Van Riemsdyk, but it was picked off. And out come the Hurricanes to center. Rutu in on the left wing. A little bit too far for Jeff Skinner. Loose puck is gobbled up by Toronto, and Bozak will launch a backhand out at center. Kessel splits the defense. He's in love. The goal! Stop by Ward! He came within an ace of having his 20th goal of the season and as bad a goal as Ward gave up. What a save that was. You know, it's funny. That's the good goalies. They make a mistake, but they don't get rattled. I mean, that's just experience. And Phil Kessel here just takes off through the middle. A little Hail Mary play that hits the leg and ends up on Kessel's stick. But this goes in on Cam Ward. I mean, this night's a disaster. But he battles, battles, battles. Knows he has to make this save. And a great save on Phil Kessel, who tries to go 5 hole. So it is still 1-0 Toronto. Wrapped around the boards. Rangers stumble. This allows Bowman to get it in over the line, but Riley got there ahead of him. Now it comes back to the point of shot. And that hit the skate of the Carolina player cutting in front and slowed it up appreciably to allow Bernier to smother it easily. Carolina will use their blue line. They're pretty good at making sure that they use their points. It's the only way Carolina can play. They have to chip and chase, and Bowman with great speed hunts the puck down. And then the good gap control by the defense. Belmore falls the play, closes the gap, but it doesn't hardly get through to Jonathan Bernier. Draw to the left of Bernier. Eric Stahl, he's enjoyed playing here in Toronto. 19 career games at the Air Canada Center. He has 10 goals and 19 points. And again, the matchup consider, continues here as Jay McClement going head to head against Derek Stahl. Uh, between those two combatants, or once we get uh, everybody straightened out, whoops, now we got to get a new stick. So Stahl will have to go back and get a new twig. Titan Equity Group Limited is a proud partner of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Dream big. Invest in your future securely. Faceoff will be to the left of Bernier. And Stahl won it cleanly. Commissarek 
down the boards. Kuhlman got a piece of him as it goes free back of the goal. Trying to get it in front with Skinner. It's knocked up into the screen though. And there'll be another faceoff coming in the circle to the right. The Hurricanes are arguing that maybe the lead player shot it without a deflection up into the screen. And that discussion is going on now with the officials. And all four of them have uh, decided that no. Bob, you're right down there. What did you see? I think it went off. I think it went off a Carolina player, or uh, the, the Maple Leafs didn't shoot it over the glass, so there's no penalty. I think it hit something first. Let's have a look, Bob. Well, that's what the adjudication has come up with. Uh, let's see. Anyway. Four gathered together, they decided that it went off something, and so here's the faceoff in the Toronto zone without a penalty. It almost looked like Skinner shot the puck, but yeah. it was very difficult to tell from that angle also. Right back in the Carolina zone, now shot into the near corner. Connerson gets there first, played it ahead. Kuhlman was knocked down from behind, and that causes the icing to be waved off. one nothing Toronto on a goal by Phil Kessel from behind the goal line. Bernier tries a quick up here for Clarkson and he didn't straddle the blue line long enough and he put himself offside. As well as Bernier handles the puck and does those nice little plays behind the net, those long passes, he doesn't seem to get much on them. And that play there, he had to sweep it and actually put his team offside because it wasn't quite crisp enough going down the ice. And Bernier's as good as they can be behind the net. And on that particular play, they're a little bit anxious for Clarkson waiting for that puck to come. Ross scrummed, controlled by Gardner into the near corner. Gardner plays it ahead for Van Riemsdyk. That went right by him. A shot went off a Branson in front. And Bernier had to make the save there on an excellent recovery of a redirect right in front of him. Branson in the wing. It's backhanded to the line, but got away from Stahl, and now here's Bozak in across the line. Tyler Bozak drops it back, and Gardner stepped into one, and it went into the chest of Ward as we get Kessel down in the corner. Derby getting a little animated there as Kessel ran him over going to the net. And that's why Gerby stays in the league. He's not a very big man, but he's competitive as can be and a feisty player. And Kessel will just get in the corner. It's no wonder he gave him a real good slash right in front of the official and no call. Wow. 57.6 seconds to go in the first period. Kadri lost the draw there to Mal Holtra. And the Hurricanes get it to the line, but Kadri intercepts. Right wing side for Raymond. Raymond down the right wing boards. Holds the brakes on in the corner. Finds Morgan Riley. Fired it well wide to the goal. Ranger trying to keep it in, but it's out at center. One on one. Bowman against the youngster. Bowman shot is taken on the chest by Bernier and Hell. Well, that's a huge save again as this time Ranger gets caught with 30 seconds to go in a period, and you do not want to pinch as a defenseman here, unless you're 100% sure, let alone let your check go down the ice. And the so Leafs are very fortunate here as Bowman does not understand that that was a two-on-one as he had an available player, Dvorak, on the other side. What's the time, what's the score? You got it, Bob. Yeah, as a former defenseman, I'm sure you asked yourself a lot well, that and, question. And even as a coach, you know, in the last couple of minutes of the period, you always remind the defenses, hey, remember, time, score. You know, we got a one nothing lead here, no pinching. Shot is taken on the chest and held again by Parnier as Jeff Skinner got it away. And of course, the end result as well as you end up on your own end. So it compounds the mistake by not being able to get out. And lose the draw, and Bernier, as we've watched all season long, in perfect position without the rebound. Clement and Stahl again. 
Stahl is able to tie up the stick of McClement, but McClement got the puck into the fire boards, and now Clarkson is able to loft it down into the zone. 20 seconds to go in the period. McClement back of the net, can't get it in front. It goes off a skate, and Carolina will break out. Stahl skating through the neutral zone and hits the line, drops it off there, trying to play it in with Rutu, and the Leafs will chop it out and down the ice. And... Uh, point five seconds left in the period. So I'm not sure what the world record is for fastest goal, but they're going to have to really go some uh, to get this done. I they may add some time. I would we'll be wait surprised if this ends up a second, but we'll see. It'll be in the circle to the left of Bernier. McClement is there to take the draw again. One second. Yeah. 1.5. All right. More than that. 1.1. Do we have 1.2? <laughs> Bingo! Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> so the period ends. Shots are 12-7 Carolina, and the goal is a funny one. Goaltending. The difference in this period. As Bernier was solid, did his job, not a lot of work, but still enough against a bad goal against Cam Ward. That's the difference in the period. Simple as that. Well, Castles. Think, oh, sorry, Bob. Well, I just think I, I like the effect that I've seen already in Tyler Bozak back in the lineup after that 12-game absence. Some energy on that number one line and a big reason why they got the first goal of the game. So Phil Kessel's 19th of the season from Bozak at 16.56 is the only goal. Let's go downstairs to Paul Hendrick. Mission was brought to you by Ford. Go further. after a period as we get set for number two here at the Air Canada Centre. Kessel's 19th from Bozak at 16.56. And the Maple Leafs with a 1-0 lead despite being outshot 12-7. Shots directed at the net. Those blocked, missed, and on goal. 20 for Carolina, 16 for Toronto. As it is played by Clarkson to the line. Knocked a little bit deeper and so... Stecker up, plays it ahead at the left wing side and now breaking out with it is Skinner. Jeff Skinner in with a shot. That's high and wide of the net. Bounces into the corner. Still bouncing around in there. As Fiduff took his man into the corner and now here's Dion Fiduff chipping it to the line and whacked out of the air and rolling on edge towards the net. Ward will have to handle it. Pass through the middle and brought on by Stahl. Jordan Stahl now with a shot and ramps off the stick of Carl Gunnarsson and up into the screen out of play. Well, good defensive play by Gunnarsson here as he gets a stick into the shot here up over top. Carl Gunnarsson again very quietly is doing his job defensively for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Once again, as always, paired with Dion Phaneuf against the opposition's best line. Face off to the right of Bernier, and it is controlled by the Leafs, fed by Franson around to the far side. Van Riemsdyk misses Kessel with a pass, and it's into the center ice area. Franson has it again. Gardner. The pass, it bounces over the stick of Kessel and goes for an icing. We talked about the Carolina Hurricanes and their penchant for takeaways. <laughs> well, we may have found out why. <laughs> On the road, they have 132 in 19 games. In 20 home games, they have 137 more for a total of 269. So they're obviously much better at home taking the puck away than they are on the road. Larson, are you suggesting 
I'm the real-time stats might no, be a little I, inaccurate no, again, Mr. Bowen. I'm just suggesting that figures don't lie, but liars can figure. So, go figure. It's a subjective thing, and uh, everybody has a different idea of what the giveaway or takeaway or a hit is. And here are the Leafs breaking out with it. Here's Kessel across the line. Works into the corner, centers. That went off the stick of Ward. And out comes Stahl at center ice. Stahl to Gerby. Gerby works in, flips it towards the net, but it's wide. Bernier playing it back into the corner. Coming out of the corner is Alexander Semin, he scores! Gerby in front of the net. And Alexander Semin did the work. Well, Gerby brings the puck in to start the playoff. And Semin, who's been just Wyatt with just four goals in the season, been injured a lot. As Gerby throws it in, and Gerby then just sneaks towards the slot, and he is left wide open on the play. Seven just outfights his man. It's Gardner, and then Gerby finds that seam between defense and forward and is not picked up. As one, two, three players, Bozak being the third who should have stayed in front of the net, goes for the puck, doesn't win, and that's why Gerby was left wide open and the puck goes through between the arm and the body of Jonathan Bernier. Ninth of the season for the diminutive Nathan Gerby. And the game is tied. And across the line, fed on the backhand and in front of the net, fed around the board by Ranger. And now here is Mason Raymond. Unable to get it freed up, Riley does. Ranger turns and his backhand pass. Brings Kadri, who feeds it on for Lupo. Lupo rolls it across the goal crease area. Kadri sends it right back. It comes back onto the skate of Riley. Riley dropping for Raymond. Raymond with a pass into an open corner that's going to be cut off by Jim Gleason. Gleason gets it ahead at center, and the Leafs will regroup it back in their own zone, but changes coming for both teams. Morgan Riley chased by Boychuk. He got away from him. Riley coming through the neutral zone, lost the disc, got it back now, Orr's going to be called offside. So the faceoff outside the blue line, and it's a 1-1 tie. We watched Cam Ward, he wasn't square on the Kessel goal in the first period. Now Kessel comes down the wing again, this is not Cam Ward. He gets a little bit flat, and you look at where he is here, and way deep it collapses into his net. Cam Ward normally, if he's on his game, just stays square. And doesn't give away the net like he did there as much. Not bad on that particular play. But when you have Phil Kessel, you better turn and be at the top of your crease or he's going to beat you far side on those shots. You don't want to retreat too quickly. Gardner all tangled up there with the forward. This allows Sekera to get in over the line, but he couldn't get a shot away. Brought back the other way now by Peter Holland, who banks it in over the line. But he did it from his side of center ice, and they're going to call this icing. Peter Holland's been surprisingly good based on his resume coming here defensively, and I think he learned an awful lot in the American Hockey League. As Gardner gets caught here filling in, but Holland right there to make a great defensive play, and we've seen him do that a lot. Remember in period one in Bob McGill, a similar play, except the forward didn't help with the defense like they did there. Exactly that, and Jerry Domingo also coming all the way back to the net, taking away that pass. Bounces into the corner, Rutu trying to play it out in front. Someone's lost a bonnet in the corner. Now along the wall it goes, that's Jerry Domingo's helmet that is lying in there. Now back to the point, long shot to flex right on, and that was stopped by Bernier. Good positioning to get across and make sure he had enough down low. At the blue line, Gleason. Long shot is deflected in front. Holland with it again, and he flips it down the ice. Because of the icing, the number one line for the Carolina Hurricanes are on the ice. Now they get another change against the fourth line, and will Randy Carlisle call a timeout here? And here it comes. Yep. Franson was waving that uh, he didn't think so. Domingo is going to get a helmet. And Randy called the timeout as Francis gets some stick right in the top of the head as Brutu swings around. Now, Randy Carlisle called the timeout. No, he didn't. Well, he didn't because the refs didn't see it. And this way now, D'Amigo 
is getting his helmet fixed, and he's going to have to now go off the ice, which is a bonus for because the Toronto Maple Leafs because they get Jay McClement, who's a fresh center raceman. They should try that more often. Well, the fact the helmet came yeah. off had to be... Uh, and it had to be fixed. Now, let's see what happens. They, they don't gonna, like no, it much. No, gonna, uh, <laughs> now we get an argument. Now they want Jerry Domingo back on the ice. It As is. they should. I mean... It wasn't. Yeah, now he's saying, get back here. As Muller says, are you kidding me? No you can't have that <laughs> happen. <laughs> and now he's mad because he said, I had the change going on. I had them tired. And now they've done a successful job of delaying and getting everybody rested. Well, the job is still at hand here to win the faceoff, and Holland does. Gardner back to Franson. Franson returns the favor. And now Kirby is up there looking for a loose puck. It's a long lead pass. His scoop by Orr down into the Carolina zone, and the lead scamper to the bench. They get fresh bodies, and their fourth line off the ice. Sakura ahead of the center. A long shoot in is up into the screen off the blocking glove. I don't know if that was quite intentional or not, but it was brilliant for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The second period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Tim Horton's official copy of the NHL. By Just Energy. Energy made easy. And think you know the Maple Leafs will prove it. Predict game day action for a chance to win season tickets for the Leafs. Visit mapleleafs.com slash standing to learn more. That effort by D'Amigo brought back fond memories of goaltenders having strap problems. Not that you ever engineered such tomfoolery no. and trickery. Never Mr. dug a hole in the ice either. No, no, never. no. There was never a problem down there. Off the boards on the right wing side. Played out at center ice and racing after it is Gerby. Gerby looking for stall. Finds him and the shot is off the blocking glove of Bernier. Leaves Corral it brought out now by Bozak ahead to Van Riemsdyk. Throwing deep into the zone. Ward comes out of the goal to play it back. Off the body of Bozak, but unable to trap it was Riley as they were changing, and the Leafs get it back at center. A pass onto the wing for Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk saucers it in, and Bozak trying to tip it to the net, had it go wide. Out come the Hurricanes at center. And across the line for Boychuk, dropping it back, a shot in traffic, and it deflects just wide of the net as Dwyer was there. Carolina has certainly gained some confidence in scoring here in the second period. The Leafs are back on their heels again, similar to the way they were early in period number one. Riley couldn't get the puck out. Now the Hurricanes have it into the corner, trying to center. It comes all the way back past Komisarek and out into the Hurricane zone. 14-16 to play in the period. 1-1 one, one tie. Off the glass and into the corner and around back of the net. Boychuk lost it. It comes back to the blue line. Fed back in by Thomas Sarek. Cut off by Ranger and he finds his man at center. Here's Raymond in over the line as Kessels goes to the right. Shooting! The rebound! And it bounced over the stick of Nazem Kadri. Going the other way, Manny Malhotra, the drop pass, and a wired shot by Boychuk over the net. Another shot in front is blocked. Leafs turn back the other way with Lupo. Up ahead to Kadri. Kadri with a toe drag. Oh, oh, he had Ward sliding wide of the net. He had to reach back and make an excellent glove save after this great effort here on the two-on-one. In the lineup as a center iceman, Pete Van Riemsdyk and Kessel didn't work all that well at all, as you can see by the numbers. And you know those two are glad to have Bozak back. As for Kadri, still a young player, still a developing player that I think is not quite ready for the number one position yet on this team. Hey, Joe. Uh-huh. From your iPod <laughs> to the Air Canada Centre, the Beebs is here. The big shout-out to Stratford, Ontario. Absolutely. Rattled around the boards and down the ice it goes. And another icing. Will be brought back into Ward circle to the left. Well, You're a big fan, I know, Paul. You know what? I do have a couple of the songs on my iPod when I get onto the elliptical for the 28-minute sweat on a daily basis. It hasn't been daily for a while, but it's good to see Dustin <laughs> in town. <laughs> it hasn't been for a while. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
Well, there's not much of a bigger celebrity, that's for sure. A giveaway there by Carl Gunnarsson, and the shot was rattled wide of the goal. Sakura plays it back of the net. Launched high into the corner. Kuhleman trying to knock it down. McClement tried to dig it free. And Carl Gunnarsson finds a little skating room, and he'll bring it out on the right wing side for Clarkson. Clarkson lost it. Sakura brings it back in. Gunnarsson launches it high to center ice. Ball up on the wing, but too far. Sakura drops back into his own zone and gets it out at center. Lupel turns for Toronto, and he'll throw it on the backhand into the corner as changes start here for the Maple Leafs. Lupel around back and goal centered. They came all the way back to the blue line. Franson shot to Fox. Twice wide of the net. Raymond curling out of the corner, still with it, had it poked off his stick, and Justin Falk has glanced it off the glass to center ice. Played by Gardner to center. Chipped in over the line, Lupo trying to hunt down a loose puck, cleared out and down the ice by the Hurricanes, and yet another icing, and a face-off back in Carolina territory. Skinner's had some issues with concussions, and a bit of a collision inside the Leafs' blue line moments ago. As he goes down here in an awkward position, gets hit from behind. Now you think he's pretty hurt here. I'm hurt. Oh, no, no. But now I'm offside. Whoop! Oh, better hurry up and get to the bench. <laughs> and he stays onside. Quick recovery, although. Oh, well. I think he was shaken up there as he was knocked to the ice from behind. Played in over the line and racing after it. Bozak looking for Kessel in front. Tried to find Van Riemsdyk then. And it is pushed over on the wing. And now a long lead pass for Bowman. Grayson Bowman a shot and way out of the goal to cut the angle down was Bernier. Justin Falk is by far the most talented player on the fence for the Carolina Hurricanes. And you can see why with this pass. Turns around. Or sorry to Semin. My mistake. There. Tape to tape. Falk's pretty good too. But Semin with that talent throws a beautiful saucer pass. Tape to tape. And another great save by Bernier. There's no question about Simmons' talent. You just don't see enough of it on a daily basis. Riley playing it around the boards. And then lofted to center ice by Van Riemsdyk. Kessel will... <laughs> Almost came out to him right in the slot. Back to the blue line. Ranger shot off an ankle. Goes to Van Riemsdyk who's upended. Bozak along the boards. Puck comes free. Kessel back to the net. Bozak trying to get a backhand away and couldn't. Riley Nash skates to center. Left wing feed for Tim Gleason. Gleason gets it ahead. Dropping it back into the slot. Some good back checking there by Bozak. Bozak's pass hit a skate. And it is carried to center ice and banked ahead on the wing. Kessel sending it on the backhand down into the zone. At the blue line, waiting for teammates to get on side with Bowman, but he gives the puck away. Kessel got it ahead, and McClement steers it down into the zone. Broken up there by Franson. Corralled and brought on by Kuhlman. Kuhlman with a shot. No penalty on the trip. Now falling with the puck was Gardner, and now here's a lead pass to bring it in on the line and a shot for the safety. Bounce it off the post. What a chance that was. Manny Malhotra hit the goal post. Maybe it was the blocker. I thought it may have hit the post. Bernier got across apparently. And it is fed by Belmore to the blue line. Here is Gardner. A pass ahead at center. In across the line it goes. Chasing after it, D'Amigo, he ties up his man, Ron Hainsey. And the puck will go free to the far side, Radic Dvorak. Clears it down into the lead zone. Fanuf trying to get there ahead of Stahl and does. Kadri pushes it ahead to Lupo. Lupo unable to play it ahead. Belmore gets it back into the Toronto zone. Fanuf circles the goal and quickly got it up on the wing. And Raymond finds Lupo. He's across the line with Kadri trailing. Lupo with a shot. And it went off the stick and up into the screen, out of play for the faceoff coming in Carolina territory when we return. A 1-1 tie in Toronto.
an interesting play moments ago by the Carolina Hurricanes as Bowman goes for a change here. There he goes to the Carolina bench to the left of your screen. Now the Leafs are in the Carolina zone for a considerable amount of time. Boychuk is the player that comes over, but he doesn't get into the play until right now as he stands and hides behind the Leafs. And this created his chance. And what a save by Jonathan Bernier on the rebound as he gets across. Here's the rebound. Wow, as he gets his blocker across and saves the goal on the rebound attempt. So the draw to the left of Cam Ward, still a 1-1 tie. Bozak couldn't flip it off there for Kessel, now forces the play back into the zone. Falk sends it out into the center ice area for Alexander Semen. Semen in over the line. Semen getting wide, got a shot away. Then Gardner had it knocked away, had to go off a stick, it comes into the slot. Sekera couldn't get a shot away. Now he has it into the half boards to Jordan Stahl back to the blue line and the shot rattled wide of the net. Kirby turning with it. In for Alexander Semen. Pass in front. And the stick of Gardner saved that as Riley Nash was headed off the bench hard to the goal. Semen in the corner coming up with it. Took the shot off the glass. It's over on the far point. Fall to the near side to Sekera. Long shot. That went just wide. Chipped ahead at center and Kessel trying to break away, but Sekera is back there to take it away for Carolina. A 1-1 tie here in Toronto. Gardner lost it. Shot hits the side of the goal. Comes in front. Down is Bernier. And he's going to do a little shimmy, shimmy shake and get out of that goal to make sure no one sees it over the line. Well, this puck bounced oh, back. Oh, there it is now. It bounced back into him, Joe, and you know a goalie seeing the puck well when he picks pucks up through traffic or when they arrive just in front of the crease. And here's the play here. It almost squeaks, and you can see him pull his hand back and push the puck on the right side of the goal line if you're a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. Well, it never did get across that line. And so the faceoff is in the circle to the right. Gonna look in the overhead now. This will give you a better look at how Bernier finds this puck there and then pushes it back. He's smart enough to cover up the net cam by laying flat in his back afterwards also. Rolls in on him again and he's going to cover up. We'll try it all over again. And that allows the Carolina team to have the change that they're looking for and forces the Leafs to throw their change over the boards also as the matchup battle continues. Stahl comes on, and so does McClement for the Maple Leafs, and that'd be Eric Stahl. 1-1 one, one tie. Gerby scoring here in the second. Kessel scoring in the first. And what this does, of course, is keep the big line off the ice for the Maple Leafs. Every time Eric Stahl is on the ice, that means McClement's on the ice. That means the Bozak line isn't on the ice. Kuhlman trying to one-hand it up the boards, and that doesn't work. Stahl in the corner. Centers. Went off to Migo. It goes to the far boards. Played into the corner and back of the net. Clement got a piece of it. Stahl comes away with it. Centers in front. Picked off by Fanuf. Up ahead at center, it goes to D'Amigo, and now to Carl Gunnarsson to the line. Offside. So out over the blue line it will come with 7.47 to play. Leafs fans, Rogers and Fido Wireless customers now have more chances to win with the Leafs. Every game day, you can text Leafs to 555 for a chance to win monthly prizes, which include Toronto Maple Leaf tickets and autographed team jerseys. Well, if you're going down to the Winter Classic and you want to join the Blue Year's Day, the ultimate pregame tailgate party, it'll be at the Big House. You can visit LeafsNationBlueYearsDay.com. Pancake breakfast. It's going to be the Molson Canadian Bar Live Entertainment. Lots of fun. And a lot of people are down there already. The juniors are playing at Comerica Park. The London Knights are tonight. Bounces out in front of the goal! And it's chipped into the chest of Bernier. David Clarkson missed the last shift, the last couple of shifts, and he is not on the bench at the moment that we can see. So we'll try and get an update for you on that as the Carolina Hurricanes continue to have some pretty good success down low, and that puck is bouncing all over the place in front of Jonathan Bernier. And Wojciech with a chance, another big save. Jerry D'Amigo has taken his spot on that line with McClement. 
as a shot stopped by Bernier off the stick of Alexander Semin. 21-13, the shots now in this game. And down into the Carolina zone it goes. Clarkson only played two minutes in this period, so there must be something going on with him. A lead pass deflects by a diving Gerby into the Toronto zone. Quickly fed around by Franson. Sekera pinches, but Bozak gets it ahead to Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk back to Bozak. Bozak shoots! And he sent it high over top of the net. And the Leafs with only one shot in this period with 6.43 to go in the second. Semin in with a shot. That's stopped by Bernier. Laying around the boards, but no one there. And it is trapped at the blue line by Hainsey. Fed in and knocked back to the goal then by Gardner. 14 for Carolina. So the Carolina Hurricanes have taken over this game in the second period since scoring the tying goal. Here's Van Riemsdyk in with Kessel. Kessel back to Van Riemsdyk. They score! I don't know if it was touched by Van Riemsdyk or went in off the Carolina defense. I think it goes in off Tim Gleason. If so, that's the 20th of the year for Phil Kessel. But when you have a couple of lethal weapons, you don't need many shots. And that's been the story of the Leafs' year. As the Carolina Hurricanes here get caught at the blue line, it's a two-on-one. And I think this is going to be Kessel's goal from that angle. We'll have another look at it here. What a play by Ben Reesway to pull it in front of him. The referee got in the way of that one. And I'm not sure if that's Kessel's goal or Van Reeves right tapped it in going to the net. Ron Haynes, he's firing the puck down the ice, I think tells us it went in off his stick. I tend to agree with you. So the Maple Leafs regain the lead. We're going to give it to Kessel, his 20th and his second of the game. And Reemsdyke will get the assist. Here's Hainsey. Hang around on the boards and the crowd getting into it here at the Air Canada Center. Backhand pass. Springs Bowman who rolls it in and then peels to the bench. That's all you need. Two shots a period and let Bernier do his thing. Now at center ice, here's Peter Holland. Holland drops the puck from Holland. There's a loose puck in front of the goal. And Holland couldn't deliver it on the backhand. Out comes Eric Stahl. Stahl sends it off. They've accredited the goal to Kessel. A two-on-two -two break now sent in by Domingo. He tries to get it on Mike Commissera. Played around on the boards. Fanuf pinches. Here's Kuhlman stealing. He's right. Holy mackerel! What a bullet! When he shoots, he's got a rocket. Kuhlman's problem is he doesn't do it enough. Good chip and chase here by the Maple Leafs to create pressure. D'Amico creates the pressure. The puck doesn't get around. It's put up with an excellent pitch. And here is the absolute blast past Cam Ward. As Fanuk beats Skinner to the puck. Skinner tries to push it to the middle and it ends up right on Kuhlman's stick. And Kuhlman here rifles this baby, pitches Cam Ward on the short side. And all of a sudden, just like that, when the Maple Leafs were on their heels, two quick goals in the second period with just over five minutes to go. Two goals a minute, 16 apart. Have opened up a two-goal lead. And this has been the story of the Maple Leafs season, hasn't it, Joe? I mean, they get some great goaltending at one end by Bernier to keep the minute. They don't have anything going offensively, just two shots in the period, and then bang, bang, and all of a sudden they're up by two. It's a formula that works, but is criticized often. But if it works... They don't ask how. No, they, last time I checked, that's not part of the box score. Nikolai Kuhleman registers his fifth goal of the season. And the Leafs have a 3-1 lead. Bounces down into the Toronto zone. Gardner chasing back to get away from the checking of Semin and it's back into the center ice area. This will be an icing with four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the period. Unassisted goal from Kuhleman. 
Nikolai Borashevsky watching here, possibly for the Russian Olympic team. Belmore cheats, gets caught. Great move by Van Beemsky. And then it goes off Hainsey's stick for Kessel's goal. And then a lovely chip and chase by Domingo. Creates the pressure. Leeson throws it around. It gets caught because of a great play by Pinup on the pitch. Boom! And Kuhlman, 3-1 leaves. Face off in the circle of the left. And it is chipped out into the center ice area. And Bob McGill, some interesting defensive plays in the blue line by the Carolina Hurricanes. That's been an issue for them all season long. Gardner just did get off here to not be penalized for too many pens. As the Leafs have opened up a two-goal lead, Kessel and Kuhlman scoring. Over two minutes in this second period. This is his last shift. This is all we can come up with here as he went into the boards in an awkward fashion and maybe his right arm or shoulder. I'm not going to try and play doctor. You can be the judge, but that was his last shift of the period and he's now not on the bench. Phil Kessel's 20th goal of the season, the sixth time that he has registered 20 or more goals in a season. Matt Sundin had a dozen. So it is a three to one Toronto lead. Played to the blue line, wrapped back out at center by Ranger. Now following up on the rush now is Raymond. Raymond with a shot that's blocked. A rebound goes to Kadri, and that was stopped by Ward. Kadri to Raymond. Raymond shoots it, knocked down by Ward, but a rebound in front of the goal. And the swinging stick of Ward knocked it away from Kadri, who was right there. Back to the blue line it comes. Over on the near side for Morgan Riley. Riley will play it in around back of the net. Lupul able to knock it free for Kadri. It goes off a skate and will come in front. Tim Gleason will get it and bring it out at center ice. Here is Stahl in on the left wing with some skating room. Goes around back of the net. Centered, cleared away by Ranger. Shot is deflected wide off the glove of Bernier. Another shot well wide of the goal. Raymond can't get to it, but it bounces over the stick of the defenseman and comes to center ice for Hainsey to try and restore order. Now Gerby in across the line. Long pass there for Malhotra. Way back of the net for Gerby. He's got seven in front of the net. Well, he was in front of the net. Now he snows first down into the corner, and now he gives Ranger a shot. That may just negate the penalty that was about to be called for him getting filled in probably by Ranger. Dumb play as the Leafs were in the way, on the way, I believe, of getting the initial penalty. Here's the play behind the net. There's the initial penalty on Ranger, and Semin goes down. And he didn't like the fact that Ranger shot a stick away, and then Semin with the retaliation play. And now it's going to be four on four. And you heard, when your team is down 3-1, and you have a chance to go in the power play with three minutes to go, that's just not a bright thing to do for Semin. And you want to look to a guy that's paid a lot, that's on your top six for leadership. That is certainly not strong leadership there. 16.55, the time of the penalties, and they will be coincident minors. Burton Muller, I am sure. He's not liking that. Four on four hockey here, and uh, under these circumstances, it's not been kind to Carolina. They've scored twice and given up six. The Leafs are two and two. On the board, Skinner. Back to the blue line it goes, and the shot knocked away by Bernier. The puck is still in front of the net, and another penalty call. A hook this time, and the Leafs will be a man short. Four on three, and Dion Phaneuf's going to the penalty box. And right in front of the net, yeah, there's the hook on Eric Stahl with his stick right into the body of Eric Stahl. No doubt about that call. He's got a call. 17-12, the time of the penalty. like the play where he got hit into the boards but still a battle to try to get back in front of the net 
And Eric Stahl is a handful. He's a big man when he gets in position in front of the goaltender. When you lose body position going to the net, it's tough to get it back. Unless you do that, Bob, and end up in the box. Right? Rattled around the boards by Cody Franson and out and down the ice. And that is a huge face-off win there by Jay McClement. Last five games, the Leafs have given up one goal ten times a man short. Here's Stahl across the line. Franson trying to shield him. McClement there. Stahl got it back, but Sakara keeps it in. Sakara now at the blue line with a shot. That was off a leg wide of the net. Far side for Skinner. Back to Sakara. Sekera to the near side, the one-timer scores! Justin Falk let it go, but I think it ramps up off a stick, and it may be Eric Stahl. No, Franson, I believe. Franson, yeah. Yep. And a tough penalty by Phaneuf, trying to gain position to get back in front of the net. Stahl does a nice job going in front of the net, and then it's Falk, who I talked about a little bit earlier in this period, who just rifles it a one time with Shakira with a nice pass and there's no doubt about it it hits Francis stick you can hear it and then up from the top of Bernier who has no chance on the play so for Justin Fall his third goal of the season and it's a power play marker and it cuts into the lead it's three to two now the Hurricanes back again with a drive, and that went off the blocking glove of Bernier up into the screen and out of play. Injuries are brought to you by Sokoloff Lawyer. Seriously injured, don't put it off. Call Sokoloff. Personal injury experts visit areyouhurt.ca. A lot of people left on that list. Trevor Smith along with David Boland. Maybe David Clarkson again. We'll have yeah, to wait maybe. and see. Have to wait and see. Right down into the Carolina zone. Shots are 27-18 Carolina. Delmore is around back to the net. Skinner and Sekera draw the assist on the goal. Pushed out at center ice. Riley to Phaneuf. Up ahead for Kessel. A crossbar. Kadri going wide, and he couldn't get the shot away before Belmore deflected it into the corner. Derby starts back up ice now for Carolina. Derby going wide, got around Lupo, works in off the wing, trying to go to the side of the net, he does! Right on the goal line! And the puck is taken away there by Kadri. Bernier just restoring order to himself, and a shot is blocked. Rebound still in front of the goal. Stall with a shot block, got it a third try. Now, oh, Sakura with it with a shot. The flex off the goaltender wide of the net. Riley trying to play it out on the backhand was Cadbury and failing. Into the corner for Stahl. Stahl to Salmon. Salmon to Stahl. Poked off his stick by Fanuk. A big collision there. And then another collision as Ranger got his man. Bouncing puck still in on a slash. Coming here as a retaliation, I believe. Jordan Stahl that was absolutely run over by Ranger after he won the puck battle against Dion Phaneuf in the corner. And before that, Bernier on the scramble with a great save, and Riley helps it along as Bernier reaches back with his glove. And just after that, a slashing penalty for Jordan Stahl as a retaliation play after he was absolutely buried by Paul Ranger against the boards. 45.6 seconds remain in the period. And the Leafs to their second power play. They had two shots, but were not successful with the man advantage. And uh, so it is the Leafs first unit out there with Lupo playing center. He has the puck in front of the goal! And it was tipped by Phaneuf just wide. Kessel works the half courts to Lupo. Back to the point to France and the shot. Big rebound in front of the goal. And it's swept wide of the net. Kessel, side of the goal again, coming out in front of shot. And that was stopped by Ward. Back to the blue line to Franson. Franson to Kessel. Phaneuf is down in front of the net. Down low, a wraparound goes wide. Franson with it again at the near boards. Back into Phaneuf. Back to the goal, it goes for Lupo. Lupo trying to work his way around the official as well. Broken up by Sekera, and he's going to 
have the time run out. So the Leafs will still have a significant time in the power play to start off the third and fresh ice. We'll just catch up to this penalty here. Here's Ranger with this big play coming up right there. There, and here comes the slash on the back of the legs from Stahl, and there up goes the arm. Well, after giving up a goal to allow Carolina back in it, some momentum as they head to the uh, end of second period, and you hope that they can carry through and get things started on the right foot in period three. On fresh ice on the power play, a very important power play coming up for the Maple Leafs to start the third. 16 to 13, the Leafs are outshot, but they carry a 3-2 lead to the third period. Let's go downstairs. To Nikolai Kuhlman has the goal of importance thus far. The go-ahead marker in a 3-2 Toronto advantage heading to the third period. David Clarkson on the bench, so that is good news for the Maple Leafs. And after leading after two periods of play. The Leafs are 14-1-2. And, two. and uh, hoping that they're not going to be forced into another overtime slash shootout situation, which four consecutive games, that's been the order of business. Down into the Carolina zone it goes. Lupo trying to get it away there from Hainsey. It is spin along the wall and played back towards the blue line. Phaneuf stands in. Belmore couldn't get it by him, but now it's carried to center by Dwyer. Dwyer on the left wing. Dwyer going to the net! And that was deflected just wide as Fanuf tried to control Dwyer's attempts at redirecting that. Kessel has it knocked off his stick. Played back down the ice by Carolina. Fanuf makes a nice little touch pass there for Franson. Franson is allowed to come in over the line. Franson now with a shot that is a weak one that went wide of the net. Rebound on the near side. Kessel banking it in for Lupo. Lupo to the net on the backhand. It was blocked. Left there for Van Riemsdyk. Still on the power play are Toronto. Seven seconds left in it. Kessel down low. Lupo tried to step out but had it denied by Sephra. Now a backhand try at the goal. And with the paddle down, Ward is able to bend it off. Penalty is over. As back onto the ice comes Jordan Stahl. And here are the... Hurricanes bringing it to center. Falk in over the line. Falk with a shot. That went off a body wide. Kirby's drive is into the chest. Smothered again by Bernier and held for a faceoff. Well, we're going to start calling this his office like we have had many in this area have called it their office. But Ben Reams like now is becoming a regular in front of the net with that reach. He loves to pull pucks from the goal line and filter them in front of the net and he almost fools Cam Ward on his last power play attempt. He's become very good at it. Since coming here he was a player that had to be talked into going to the net a little bit more from Randy Carlisle. He's listened well and he's now doing a great job in that area. Launched high to center ice by Fanuf. Kuhlman and it died to knock it ahead. Rutu brings it back the other way. Long shoot in, directed wide by Bernier. Fell along the boards by Jeff Skinner. Cut off there by McClement. And icing is waved off. It'll roll down into the Carolina zone. One goal differential here. Leafs in Detroit on Wednesday. As that is offside at the Toronto Blue Line and will be brought back. The third period of tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL, and by the Toronto Rock. The Rock hosts Calgary on their home opener Friday, January 3rd at Air Canada Centre. For the best ticket in town, visit torontorock.com. Colin Doyle and the Toronto Rock getting back involved with their season starting up. Always a lot of fun to get to watch some of those across. And Joe, he used to be a kid when we did the games. Yeah, yeah he's but Gordy Howe now. He's old like us now. Yeah. Off the boards it goes to Gardner. Back around on the boards, far side. Chopped out at center. Kessel was racing after Bozak had tried to find him. I don't think he's that old. Well, no. There's a chance. That's for Kessel. Breakaway going in. Up those shoots. Off of Ward into the screen. That's twice tonight he's had Kessel on the breakaway and saved him. 
And this is an absolute huge save for Cam Ward, who's been good at times in this game, and other times not so good. Another turnover by the Carolina Hurricanes. Ward just gets enough of this puck off his right arm to make the save, and Carolina's been shooting themselves in the foot all game long against the big gate line by giving the puck away in the neutral zone. Domingo trying to take the draw, and then Bowman roared in there. Now they do it again, and Domingo wins it. Holland steers it into the corner, and Orr trying to get to it. Had to drop his stick before he took down Hainsey, and out come the Hurricanes. Launched in by Radic to Borat. Hanger against the boards, kicks it three to the far side to Orr. Orr plays it back, but gives the puck away to Borat coming out in front. And it's knocked into the corner, and Ranger has it again. This time he sends it out and down the ice. And uh, Ward had to stop that with his stick. Therefore, no icing and a change of players for Toronto. On to the far side. Riley Nash squeezed off the play efficiently there by Franson. Leaves Gardner. A pass ahead now for Domingo. Lofted in on the right side as Lupul is out there with Kadri and Domingo. Now it's Raymond who joins this line. Back of the net, Lupul blocked the clearing attempt. Drags it into the corner, still has it back to the point. There's Gardner with a wrist shot off a leg line of the net. Far side for Boychuk. And he gets it to center ice, knocked down by Gardner, but carried on by Dwyer to Boychuk. His shot. Got away from uh, Bernier just for a moment, but he was able to trap it and hold on. During the first two periods, shots directed at the net. Those on goal blocked and missed favored Carolina 51 to 36. Yeah, noteworthy in this game so far. The Leafs have won 61% of the faceoff. Bozak leading the way. 112 lost only six for a 67% clip idea of how valuable he has been coming back in the lineup. Good enough battle Skinner. There's Clarkson back into the fray as he gets it out into the center ice area. Right back into the leaf end. Tipped into the corner for Carl Gunnarsson. Off the boards for Clarkson. Battles there with Sakura against the wall. That's drawn a major league crowd and some pushing and shoving allows it to go into the center ice area. Back comes Carolina with Skinner. Skinner holds back to the blue line of shot, and that's high and wide of the net. Rebound goes right through the goal crease, and it's dragged out now by Kuhlman. He's got Clarkson with him, back in over the line. Clarkson going in on the backhand, and it was deflected by Sekera wide of the goal. Kuhlman in the corner. Off the bench comes Bozak. Bozak centers. Clarkson can't find it. Now Bozak gets it back to the blue line. Ranger shot goes! Paul Ranger, but circle Clarkson for his work in front of the goal, and the Leafs have their two goal lead back. Yeah, David Clarkson deserves a lot of credit, and this is what the Leafs have been looking for from David Clarkson since he first arrived as a Maple Leaf. Kicking pucks to the net, going to the net, winning the battle after he does go to the net. Good play by Kuhleman, who's had a good night here to bring the puck along. And there's Clarkson again, winning the battle. And another terrific play there by guess who? Bozak that time on the puck recovery to get it back to Ranger. And Ranger snaps it in past Ward, who's tightened his net again on the far side. Now, well, Bozak also, guys, came off the bench. He had fresh legs out there, and he really did a great job. But you talk about David Clarkson. When he's parked in front of the goaltender, and you see a lot of highlights in the last five, six games, where he's all over the front of the net, and that's when he's at his best. And that's what he gets paid to do, Bob, and he's starting to do it more and more. So Paul Ranger scores his first goal of the season with a goalie in the net. And his second overall. And Tyler Bozak, welcome back. Three assists. A lead pass in off the line. Stall is denied by Bernier. Around back to the goal. Still free. Backhand shot goes wide of the net. Taken there on the backhand by Alexander Simmons. Another shot off of Bernier into the near corner. That bounces in front. And the Maple Leafs trying to work it out. Van Riemsdyk has some room. Trying to work in over the line. 
And the puck wouldn't go with him. Belmore. On to the right wing side for Semin. Semin works into the slot. Dishes it off. The pass in front of the goal. Bernier spread out and is able to manage to get that off his pad. For might Paul Ranger. Sorry. Go ahead, Nelson. I was just going to say that might have been a pretty good play there by Kadri. I'd like to see it again as he came back defensively very well. That goal by Paul Ranger is his 100th career NHL point. And when we come back, we will just furnish that for you, Mr. Millen. Thank you, because Joe. Because that's the type of people we are. His four shots in this game, he has been a factor, but maybe the best play he's made is defensively here as he hooks on enough to save a goal as Bernier runs out of position a little bit. And how about Bernier, speaking of him, on stall, stays right with him, top of his crease. And Clarkson really bothers Cam Ward here. Cam Ward hacking away, worrying about him more than he is. The shot that goes by him on the stick side. What do you do, Bob McGill, when you got a handful like that in front of the net? Well, as a goaltender, that's a tough play, and I think Ward loses his concentration on the puck, all because of the presence of David Clarkson. Tyler Bozak, a career high with three assists in a game, as a shot by Skinner is fanned on. He's had two assists in a game eight times. He's had three points in a game seven times. So the return of Tyler Bozak is obviously working wonders here. Here's a chance for McClement. Enough tries to creep in. Clarkson is able to keep the puck alive. And it is back at the blue line and bounces in the right of the net off the stick of Gunnarsson. McClement couldn't get to it. Clarkson fighting for it. And it is pushed out. No, it's not out. Kuhlman has it again. Dion Knopf! And he wired that and almost knocked Ward down. Now there's going to be a penalty. And it's going to be against the Leafs. Clarkson, I believe. And is it Clarkson for yep. goal interference? It may, in fact, be just that. And that is the call. He nips on to Cam Ward and up here. There with that extra push. When he shoves him down, he gets caught. Second power play of the game for Carolina. They were perfect on their first one. So at 7.05 of the period, Clarkson in the box. And the Leafs two goal lead. Clarkson plays right on that line. And sometimes he goes over it like he did there. This is an important penalty kill now for the Maple Leafs. They don't want to give Carolina any life at all with 12.50 to go in the third. Bozak face-off win, sent down the ice, and he'll head to the bench. Wins another draw. Pass up on the wing is deflected. Look out, that's gone up into the goal seats and into the spectators. In the corner, in behind Henny. Yeah. Henny, did, were you? Are you okay? I'm ducky right now. Oh, I just God. did. Hey guys, the big thing here on that play, you got to get up on the play when you dump the puck down the ice, and make sure that you hold the blue line. An excellent job by Paul Ranger on a good read and deflects the puck into the stands. Long bouncing shot down on Ward, and uh, six goals in the last ten games for the Leafs. Defensive core, Paul Ranger seeing to that. Nikolai Kuhlman sees to a turnover, and he will rifle it down off the glass into Carolina territory. A minute 18 to go in the power play. Leafs have iced the puck three times. Semin slowly to the red line, dropping it back. Sekera gets it across the line, and uh, Rutu gets it around back of the net. Centering effort there by Stahl was broken up. Van Riemsdyk finds an opening on the boards and he'll send it down the ice for the fourth time. Out comes the power play again. Sekera to center. Onto the wing to Semin, onto the left wing side. It goes in into the corner for Rutu. Rutu centers, it comes back to Skinner at the near point. Skinner to Sekera. Far side, the one-timer. There was Bernier to knock it away. Round into the near side. Skinner had thoughts of trying to deliver a shot. Fanned on it. Sekera gives it back to him. Skinner with a shot this time off the blocking glove. A Bernier third to the line, but not out. Diving for it and knocking it down the ice was Jerry Domingo. He's been a handy player since coming up from the American League with that second effort. 
perfect fourth line guy with a bit of speed that could kill penalties. Look out! Henny, are you okay? Went off my hair, I'm good. Oh, God. <laughs> Rattling right in there, and that ends up up into the well, we seats as well. Oh, I won't say it. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> I won't say it, Bob. <laughs> Visit shop.ca on Twitter and on Facebook. Share your hashtag play happy moment during the game to receive $35 on a $100 purchase. Old teammate. Going to stick together. Yeah, I think someone really did get hit with that up behind oh, no, you, though, really? Paul. Uh -oh. And, uh, yeah, they're uh, helping uh, that uh, individual. Net. I never like to see that. And no. the net is up high as well. Well, it is, but it was but shot it, it, from exactly. right along the boards and went in behind the net. Yep. Leaves still the puck. Six seconds left in the penalty as it's cleared to the line and shot off the boards to center ice. Here's Bozak trying to find Kessel as the penalty is over to Clarkson. Shot back down into the Toronto zone. Far side it is grabbed off by Morgan Riley. Fed ahead at center. Clarkson with a nifty move to gain the zone. Now to Kessel looking for the hat trick and the backhand by Clarkson went wide. Here's Kessel with it again. Kessel sends it around back of the net. Clarkson trying to work free, still has it, unable to get it in front. Long shot steered wide by Ward. Fourth time this season that Phil Kessel's had a two goal night. And some kind fan over there with the person injured took off their jersey, and they had a shirt underneath it, gave the shirt to the person that was cut, and then put his hockey jersey back on. Good for you. Pretty kind gesture in the crowd as there's still a person that has been cut by the puck. Sent around back of the net and into the far corner. Coleman launches it high into the center ice area and Franson will go back. Half the third period is in the books as Franson works it out to the blue line with a bank pass that is cut off there by Boychuk. Boychuk in with a long shot, directed wide by Bernier, paddled down, prevented it from coming in front. Dvorak back to the blue line. Another shot from wide out, blocked. Another shot to the side of the net, smothered by Bernier and Hell. The Leafs with a two-goal lead and a three-point night for Tyler Bozak. Anything for Hockey is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Well, halfway to go here in the third period. The shot's 39-24 in favor of Carolina. And once again, Jonathan Bernier, who clearly now looks like he's going to go on a bit of a run for the Toronto Maple Leafs in terms of starts, has been excellent once again in this game tonight. By the way, for the Toronto Maple Leafs D, that's seven goals tonight for the Rangers' goal in the month of December. They got no goals from the defense in November. Here's a chance in front with a sharp angle shot. The rebound is still free. And it's cleared on the backhand by Ranger out into the center ice area. So as difficult as a month it's been at times, the defense are at least starting to score for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they're getting some offense from the back end. Kadri knocked his man down. The puck goes down into the Toronto zone. Ranger tied up in there along with Boychuk. It comes around back of the net. Here's Boychuk with it. No relation to the Johnny Boychuk who plays for the Boston Bruins. As it is bounced out into the blue line area and now corralled there by Raymond. Raymond just gingerly plays it over the blue line. Bob, are you seeing a little more from Ranger, more like you did last year with the Toronto Marlies here tonight in the last couple of games? Yeah, I think that he's finally gotten his confidence. You know, sometimes you sit back and you watch in those games that, you know, he was a healthy scratch. And maybe you, you see and read the plays, and maybe he's just a lot more relaxed out there. And it goes a long ways when you get a little bit of confidence, you know, from your coach. And I think that they did a lot of talking. I saw in practice Dave Ferrer spending time with him, Randy Carlisle spending time with him, and not really getting on his case reassuring him that he'll get an opportunity to get back in there and he's paid dividends since he's come back in the last few games especially with young morgan riley well there's 41 shots on the board for the carolina hurricanes it's the 11th time this season the leafs have allowed 40 or more however they've got a winning record they're five three and two and they've done that now here's the chance for bozak Drops for Van Riemsdyk to Bozak. Bozak trying to center for Kessel going to the net. It's centered off a stick. Almost crept in on the short side again. 
to the line, backhanded towards the net, batted up on the near wing, and carried by Semin to center ice. Alexander Semin gives it away, and here's Van Riemsdyk with it again. Bank pass into the corner, wards out of the goal. Couldn't uh, get it out, kept alive then by McClement, who steers into the near corner as changes are coming for Toronto. Long pass to center ice, ends up on a Carolina stick. Pass deflected just wide of the goal as Patrick Dwyer got that from Skinner. Dwyer in the corner. Stahl trying to help out. Clarkson unable to reach it in time. Fanuk cuts it off. Now looks to play it up the boards and there's Clarkson battling for that five feet of ice to get it out into the center ice zone. Gleason shoots it right back into the Toronto end. Skinner down the wall, bodied by Fanuk. Round back of the net for Carl Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson double team, arriving on the scene to help out there is McClement. Played away from Stahl, on the wing to Kuhleman. Kuhleman banks it, and it's just going to escape the center ice. Larkson takes his man down, and McClement will launch it high into Carolina territory. Grayson Bowman, a long lead pass. That is a delayed offside. The Hurricane player had to tag up, and Ranger has it at the side of his own goal. His goal in this third period has launched the Leafs into another two-goal advantage. Down around back of the net, fired off the boards to the line, kept alive by Morgan Riley. Brought back out at center ice by Nash into the corner. He goes, trying to play it around back of the net. Falling on the play was the forward Rutu, but now back to the point it comes. Sekera with a shot, traffic in front, broken up by Toronto, but not cleared. Still free, and another shot is stopped. The rebound, and Rutu couldn't deliver the payload. It comes bouncing ahead, and now Raymond is able to just get it out at center. Six minutes and three seconds to go, and the Leafs are kind of hanging on here. Nash into the slot of drive. <laughs> that was whistled over top of the goal, and it is smothered by Bernier. The Leafs with a two-goal lead. The delivery of the game is presented by Curlator. Excitement delivered. Boy, Bozak's been terrific in this game. He's absolutely owned the face-off dot. He has three assists on the game. Defensively, he's made some excellent plays to cover up those two line mates. Set up this goal. And then made a tremendous play here to set up the Ranger goal. Very important fourth one in this third period for the Maple Leafs. Speaking of the delivery of the game, it appears that the youngster that was hit with the puck is okay. Walked out. There's going to be some stitches, we would think, from that uh, collision with the puck, but uh, it appears that the person is all right. So that's the most important aspect of that play, for sure. Absolutely. Cleared out into the center ice area. Bozak to McClement. Down into the zone it goes. Up ahead on the right wing, Alexander Semin broken up and played back at center ice for Toronto. Here's Kessel across the line. And a stick handle through a lot of traffic with time. Into the corner goes Van Riemsdyk to try and help out. Kessel almost was able to step out from the corner. And now with 5.08 to play in the period, it is Alexander Semin turning in his own zone. The Washington Capitol sends it back now to Rutu. And out come the... Hurricane slowly with a pass. It goes off a stick of Skinner, and the Leafs are able to counterattack. Clarkson, nice little saucer, and a quick shot by Kuhlman is kicked away by Woolworth. Into the corner for McClement. McClement works around back to the net. He'll play it off to Clarkson. Clarkson working the end board, plays it back to the blue line to Fanuf. He couldn't keep it in. It's played to the line. Clarkson couldn't touch it, or it would have been a delivered offside. So the Hurricanes have it under control with Eric Stahl. Another player we should talk about who's had a terrific night is Kuhlman. And we haven't been able to say that in a lot of nights, although he's always sound defensively, but he's showing a little more offensive flair in this game. Falk up on the right side for Boychuk. Back of the net, Bernier plays it off to Carl Gunnarsson. Up ahead, a nice play by Peter Holland to avoid the check. And it is slipped into the zone then by Lupo. Lupo carries his man into the corner. 
It comes free, and it is pushed ahead by Dwyer. Roaring in is Rutu on the right side, but also getting there quickly was Mason Raymond. Raymond ties up his man, and the puck goes free to Dwyer. They continue the battle on the end boards. Ranger knocks his man, Rutu, to the ice. Lays high around the glass. It will come to the line, but not out. Kept alive there by Belmore. Round back of the net once more. Ranger able to take it away from Dwyer. His backhand has cleared the zone. Belmore will try the other side. This is Nash against the boards. Knocked down there by Raymond, but not controlled. It comes back to Belmore at the point. Over on the far side, Leeson can't get the shot away. Nash has it again. 3.13 to play third period. Leafs by a pair. Dwyer coming out of the corner. Lost it. Lupo couldn't swat it out. Leafs have been down in their own zone for about a minute here, but have not given up a shot on goal. And then a hit there by Ranger flattened his man, Rutu. He has been a nasty one-man wrecking ball tonight. Oh, oh. Don't get it out again. There is Bernier saying enough is enough. Face off in the Toronto zone. Tonight's Leafs TV broadcast from Toronto is brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. So a much needed change of players for the Maple Leafs comes here. And it's the draw in the circle to the right. Fed around the board, but pinching air, but getting to it quickly was McClement to get it out into the center ice area. Branson couldn't knock it out. Stahl sends it into the corner. We'll keep an eye on Cam Ward for you. As the Hurricanes and Kirk Muller may decide to get him out of the goal here a little early with a two-goal differential. Here's Stahl trying to drive the net. Forced wide and back to the goal. Stahl tries to center. Bernier catches that. And another faceoff coming in the Toronto zone with 2.14 to play in the third period. Follow at Maple Leafs and the TML Talk hashtag on Twitter for a chance to win great prizes. So the faceoff will be to the right. And moving in is Eric Stahl and it'll be Jay McClement to take the faceoff for Toronto. And McClement scrums the draw and he wins it. Fed around the boards by Gunnarsson. Not cleared to the blue line. And then Clarkson is able to force it out at center ice. Kuhleman would like to buy half the rink by getting it in from the red line. McClement will help him out. A pass comes out past the blue line as Clarkson couldn't handle it. Now Fanuf takes his time before rattling it right back in again. McClement was offside. The extra delay had him going in. Now he'll force it into the bench with 1.42 to go. And the Leafs trying to avoid another bout of overtime and shootout, which they've gone four straight. But they've picked up two wins in those four games. They've been banging up points, but they've got one regulation win in their last 19 games. You know when the last time it went to 20, Joe? The 87-88 season. That's how long ago. Yeah. You probably remember that. Yeah, my hair was dark. Right along the board. He's trying to work it up the boards. Gobbled up there by Kirby. Stolen. Here's Kessel just shooting it in. 122 and counting. He's doing a real nice job here of eating the clock. Kessel throws it in deep. They get it behind the red line. And back it goes again by Ranger. And this has been a nice job of defending the lead here throughout this third period for Toronto. Played to center ice. Stall to the far side. Ward's heading for the bench. Extra attacker on for Carolina. And just laid out into the center ice area by Kessel. Kessel had a hat trick this year. It was against Anaheim back in October. Now he's got an empty net to work with. And he can't deliver a shot. And he'll head to the bench. 38 seconds left. Stall to the blue line. Knocked back out into the center ice area by Ranger. Here's Clarkson looking for an empty net. Bounces off his stick wide. McClellan in the corner. 
McClement back of the net for Clarkson. And it is grabbed by Riley Nash with 18 seconds left. This is Rutu getting in over the line. Fanuff plays it high. It's bouncing. Sweet, Rose. sweet, sweet. sweet. Score! Score! <laughs> Good effort, Ron Hainsey. That hurt. You might be out for three. <laughs> Look at Kessel laughing. <laughs> they can't believe it on the bench. As Pranup gets the goal. What a draw weight this is. Ah, he's from Alberta. Probably he curled a little bit. Sweet, and sweet. And right. Gainsey <laughs> just about killed himself. <laughs> well, you know what? Plus minuses are a big part of contract negotiation. I think. It. But that wasn't really yeah, the point. He tried hard to get there. I think his contract's done. With 7.1 seconds left, it wasn't going to have much to do. I think that deal's pretty much done. An announcement coming up. I was no, I think. was thinking about Hainsey. Oh, Hainsey. <laughs> Jeez, <no. laughs> Try to get to that puck. <laughs> You're right. The Fanuff up will get the goal. It's his fourth of the season. And there is the horn. The Leafs have points in five consecutive games, three of which are victories as they head off to the Winter Classic with a big four to, or five to two win over the Carolina Hurricanes. And a terrific effort again by the goaltender Bernier, 43 shots against. The Leafs looked at times like they were in trouble in this game, but their potent offense came to the forefront again. They're probably not going to get stars in the game, but Clarkson and Ranger may have played as big a part in this win as any two players. And Kuhlman, with a much better game than I too, Joe. Here's and a look at Phil Kessel's goals. Yeah. Off of the fence and into the net. He had two breakaways in this game that he missed also. And, and he could have had four easily. Yes, he could have. He even had a shot at an empty net but couldn't get it to where he needed to go. But the Maple Leafs will head off to the Winter Classic. Flying into Detroit tomorrow to spend three days there. They'll practice at the big house on Tuesday and then the game against the Red Wings, which will come on a Wednesday afternoon. The Detroit Red Wings play tomorrow and then will practice on Tuesday and play Wednesday afternoon as well. So the Maple Leafs with a 5-2 victory outshot 43-27. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a surprise who the game's number one star is in the hockey game. Let's Ladies go to Andy Frost.